Hey everyone, Zoe here. So for today's Beyond Survivors Takes, I really wanted to go about making something. I've not done a walkthrough or do-it-yourself survival or bushcraft item for quite some time. And that's really how I started, and I just want to get back to my roots. Speaking of my roots, I have purple hair now. Anyway, I drink a lot of what we in the UK call pop. Fizzy, carbonated drink. I know Americans call it soda. Um, if you're from a different country and you call it something else, let me know in the comments. I always like to learn. Anyway, I've noticed a lot of them have started putting please recycle me on the bottle to encourage people to remember to recycle. And that got me thinking, can I use an empty 2 litre soda bottle and recycle it into something I could use that would be a functional tool for bushcrafting and survival purposes? Yes, yes I can. So stay with me. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own soda bottle fabricated gas mask. Now for safety purposes, I do need to point out one thing you're making a homemade gas mask to stop gaseous substances and toxins entering your body. I cannot guarantee this will be as efficient or effective as a professionally made and professionally produced gas mask. So if you are going to use one of these in a harmful environment, please do so at your own risk. I won't be held responsible for any injuries or harm caused to you. And bearing that in mind, let's start making our fabricated homemade soda bottle gas mask. So the first thing you have to locate is an empty two litre soda bottle and you want to check it for any signs of UV radiation damage that might make the plastic brittle, any holes, so ensure it can still hold air or liquid and to do that one easy way to do it is simply blow air into it and check for any kind of white lines that show that pressure or folding has happened and we're going to be using this cleaned out and with the label removed to make the main portion of our gas mask. So for our first step, we're going to be cutting the bottom of our bottle off. If you look, there's a seam line on most two litre bottles and that's caused by their manufacturer. And we can use that as a guide to cut the bottom off. That's going to be our first step. Now when I first started this channel, I probably would have included a two or three minute long section of me showing you cutting the bottom of this bottle off. I'm going to assume you're full grown adults and you know how to utilise a knife and cut along a straight line. So we're going to be taking the bottom off. Our next step is to actually start working on the air seal and giving it the ability to wrap around our face. Now I've discovered that most of the labels on these bottles, they have a single strip of adhesive that connects the label to the actual bottle and that can actually stay behind when you've taken the label off. Now I can't get the contrast to show very well but I'm using that as my guide for my cut. Now I already know from the ones I've made for myself previously what kind of sized cut I need to make for my face but I would say use that adhesive line as your initial guiding point and we can work on expanding it to our own particular face shape in a minute. So now we've taken out that adhesive strip. We're left with our bottle which has a nice slit in it and it's also a lot more flexible now although it isn't flexible enough for me to be able to get my face into. So what we're going to be doing is where we've left that strip we'll be cutting a U-shape connecting these two areas together and that's going to be start on where our chin is going to rest and provide the air seal for the bottom of our face. Now here's the piece of plastic that I've cut out the bottom and you can see the crescent shape that I was working on. Now I'm at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to doing this as a tutorial because everyone's face is a different size and I know exactly the kind of cut I need for my personal gas mask but for you guys it's going to be difficult because you've got to basically figure it out for yourselves. So now I've made this slit, can I fit this onto my face? This is going to be very entertaining for you guys. So I have no problems with the side, but when it comes to the chin, the seal is not very good because I'm pushing it out of the way. And what that tells me is I need to make it a bigger. Now I know that anyway, because for me, for my face, I need a cut that's one inch across by six inches tall. Now to put one of these on, what you do, put your thumbs in, you pry apart the sides and put your face in. I'm sorry if the audio quality goes down here, but the entertainment quality will go up. So that's it around my face. It's on this side here, 
and this side here. And to make a seal, we pull the edges out and rest our chin against that semicircle. Now to test our seal, we put our thumb over the hole and breathe in. Now, I did that on purpose as not a very good seal. My chin wasn't pressed against it. And you can see what happened. I breathe in, I can feel the air escaping around the edges, around my head and around my chin. Now we'll know it's a good seal because it's one of the most entertaining things I can possibly do on camera and it'll be very, very embarrassing. When it's a good seal, we're sucking out all the air that's in this bottle. That will create a vacuum which will crush this bottle against our faces. Let me show you. Things I do for YouTube. So, put it on. Good chin seal. Is it a good seal? Let's find out. Yeah, pretty good seal. Do that close up because it looks silly. And breathe in. So, that's not a bad seal at all for me. Now for our next step is, this is a bit big on our heads. So we're going to be making it sized for our actual faces. And to do that, we stick it on again. Ensure we've got our good air seal. We all know how to do that now. Now, we want to be feeling for somewhere between our hairline and our temples. For me, I've got a ridge of the original bottle directly on that point. So for me, I'm going to be cutting on this ridge here, and that'll make that size perfectly for my face. We want between our hairline, mine might be receding slightly, and our temples, because we want it to rest on our forehead. So I've cut off sizing for mine. Now our mask is almost done. We've got our air seal around our face, our chin, and the last thing we're going to do is, just for comfort, is these sharp edges at the uh, top. We're just going to cut those and round them off, just like that. So there's the edges rounded off nicely, as you can see. Now, with it being clear, this probably isn't going to turn up on camera very well, but this gives you an indicator of the sort of sizing that my version has. I've got my rounded edges at the top. I've got a six inch long slit that's one inch across and the rounded bottom piece. And that makes a perfect mask for my head. Now, if you aren't having a very good air seal, there is a trick we can do. We can come along with some strong adhesive tape, like some duct tape or some Gorilla tape, and we just line the edge of our cuts to give us a bit more friction and a bit more of a seal against our faces by utilising that tape as a bit of a buffer. So if you have got air escaping, you don't need to start from scratch. We have a bit of a leeway by utilising that tape. Now I was already getting a pretty good air seal on mine, so I didn't need to do this modification with the tape. But I thought, well, at least if I do it, I can show you guys the shape that I've been cutting out. It's a lot easier to see when it's lined with tape. So that's a bit of leeway if we need to add tape to our gas mask portion of our fabricated soda bottle gas mask to get a good air seal. Next, we're working on what attaches to the bottom. Now to make our filter, we're going to need a container. And in this case, we're going to be using a standard aluminium drinks can. This is a completely normal one. I just sanded off the finish because I didn't want to show brands. And the only thing I've done is just come along and take off the ring pull tab. But otherwise, it's a completely normal aluminium drinks can. And this is going to be the main component for our filter portion of our gas mask build. So our first modification to our aluminium drinks can is a really simple one. We're going to put some small diameter holes in the base. This is so when we draw breath through the filter, the air from the outside environment comes through these holes before going through the filter and through the mask into our bodies. Now when it comes to the chemical compound we're going to be using to filter the air before it goes through our body, 
we're going to be using this. This is activated charcoal pellets. They're small pellets of activated charcoal. Now, that's not something you can tend to make easily yourself. Um, regular charcoal will work. Activated charcoal, the only way it's different is that it's burnt at a much higher temperature, which means on a molecular level, the actual molecule is a lot more porous, which means that it traps and neutralizes chemicals that go through it a lot easier. Whereas actual normal charcoal, um, a lot of it is still left over from what it was made when it was turned into a carbon, which in this case would usually be wood. But activated carbon isn't incredibly uncommon. I was able to purchase it online. It's what you'll find in military gas mask filters, in your water filter, and even in your aquarium. So I'm going to be using this activated charcoal pellets, and I'm going to be putting those inside my can to make my air filter. Now the final modification we're doing to our aluminium drinks can that's become our filter is we need to seal this hole but in a breathable way because although it's going to be filled with our uh, activated charcoal if we tip it upside down that activated charcoal is going to run out and we're going to lose our chemical neutralizing agent. Now while we don't intend to be wearing it upside down accidents can happen, it can fall over in our pack, we can be dislodged who knows? So all we're going to do is put some adhesive around what was formerly the drinks hole and then we're going to put on top of that some breathable mesh material such as cotton. So how do we attach our filter to our mask portion? Well, all we've got to do is line up our two holes and we could just come along with some adhesive tape and tape them together. Now that is a perfectly good option in an emergency. If we're going to be using this short term for a couple of minutes to get through a hazardous environment or if basically that's all we've got. However, I would like to think we'd be using it for a more extended period. And when it comes to the lifespan of one of these filters, I've been looking into it. Now military filters, ones on actual military gas masks, they're only supposed to be used for up to 24 hours. They can last longer depending on the actual concentration of the gas materials and the hazard level and all sorts of factors. So I'm going to be using that as my bench model. If I'm going to be using an aluminium drinks can as part of my filter, I'm going to be taking the mindset of if I wear that for more than 24 hours, I'm going to need to replace it. And if we're in a long-term environment, say in a methane buildup in a sewer, we're going to have to change that filter frequently. And if it's attached to our gas mask portion with tape, we're going to be wasting tape every single time we replace one. So I've come up with a better idea for making a removable gas mask filter. So what's my idea for making a removable and replaceable version of our aluminium drinks can filter for our soda bottle derived gas mask? That's actually using the threads that are left over from when this was originally a bottle. What we can do is we can take the original lid and if you look on the inside there's a small circle with a raised area around it. I'm just going to be using that as a template to cut it out into something like this. I'm going to be using that as my connection point.
So to summarise, I've showed you how to make your mask and two types of attachment points for a aluminium drinks can filter. One that's quite permanent and one that's removable or quickly detachable. But I have a third option when it comes to types of filters. 3D printed. So I found this on Thinkiverse. There's a link in the video description and it was made by this user whose name I won't be able to pronounce. As you can see, the base has holes for the air to in, go in, similar to our aluminium can. Actually, prints in three parts. This is in clear PLA plastic, just because I wanted to be able to see the charcoal on the inside. Now, there's a small gasket here that I actually glued. Um, I didn't think to show it on camera. And that glues to the top part which is almost the same as what we've been doing with the bottle top it still has the screw thread the two nest together with that uh, gasket glued in place fill it full of charcoal and just secure it with tape and we've got a 3D printed filter option so regardless of your different attachment option you've chosen for your soda bottle fabricated gas mask we've got one step left and that's to construct straps to attach it to our heads for hands-free usage. Now I have seen people use duct tape cordage or any kind of cordage to make straps. I've seen them drill through the sides of the plastic and cut tie knots in it and I've seen them use quite strong adhesives. I'm not going to be doing any of that and here's why. I spent so long making the air seal on these gas masks I don't want to risk compromising that. If I use an adhesive, it could melt through the plastic. If I drill a hole into the plastic to tie a knot of cordage around both sides, it's possibly an air seal failure that's been built into the mask. So I'm going to be using just tape attached to the sides and a strap around the back of the head. Simple. Now, when it comes to this, I'm going to recommend using an elasticated cordage, such as elastic. This is just standard household elastic, as you can see, it's got lots of flexibility to it and it will provide tension. So when I put that around the back of my head and tape both sides to my mask, it will provide pressure that pulls that mask against my face. So while household elastic is an option, I'm also going to be trying out this as well. This is shock cord. This is basically military elastic, it's a shock absorbing cord. So you can see, you can see the sort of tensile strength that's got. And I believe in Australia this is called Octo Cordage. Not sure why that is, thank you Wikipedia. So obviously when I was attaching these straps, and we're doing it onto the outside of our masks. And one of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looping the cordage on itself so that when it's stuck down, it'll just be harder for it to pull on itself. Whereas if it's just one single piece, it could slip under the tape quite easily. So I'm just having a bit extra cordage just so I can get that loop and taping it onto the outside of our mask again. And you thought me putting one of these things on was funny before I added a loop of elastic. Well, the way to do it now is put this on my head and then snug my way into my homemade filter and gas mask. Like so. Then get that chin seal and then just adjust my strap. Like so. Hands free, soda bottle, fabricated gas mask. So there you go. If you've been following this little video tutorial you should also have your own soda bottle fabricated gas mask like my examples here. I guess the only thing left for the video was for me to test these. But how can I do that in a safe manner? I'm not going to go into a hazardous environment wearing one of these unless I absolutely have to. I'm certainly not going to do it just for the purpose of filming it for YouTube. I don't think that's a very good and wise safety decision. And it's not like a hazardous environment is like the movies or video games. There's not usually ominous green smoke emanating from every surface. It's invisible or microscopic and it's just 
plain old harmful to human health. So it's not like me being in a hazardous environment wearing one of these would be particularly visually interesting for you guys either. But it does raise the question, how can I visually show that these work and are worth the time if you're making one for yourself, your partner or your companions for putting in your bug out bag, your get home kit or just having that knowledge scrolled away in the old database in case you need it. How can I test these safely? So, I'm going to test out my soda bottle fabricated gas mask in this smoky environment with this ominous green smoke. There we go, soda bowl, fabricated gas mask. If it works, you do have to regulate your breathing somewhat. So you breathe in through your mouth and out through your nose, which you might not be able to do if you have some kind of neurological condition. Also, to get a good seal, facial hair you can't really have, and also wearing corrective lenses for things like eyesight can be a bit of a problem. But yeah, they work. So, I hope you liked this video. If you did, like it on YouTube, lets me know I'm doing a good job, and tells me this is the kind of content you want me to do again in future. I'm also on social media if you want to see what I'm doing in between videos. And if you really, really liked the video, show some support by subscribing to the channel and you'll see when my next video goes live. And as ever, other than the outtakes, there's only one way I know how to end a video. That's for me to say to you, get out there into the impossible every day. Ah, oh, come on. Make sure they can hold liquid. And hold air. Now I'm getting very fond of me gas mask, I declare. It hardly ever leaves my side. I sling it on me back and I take it everywhere. It even comes to bed at night. It's been a real good pal to me, I must confess, and helped me out of many a mess. It's not an issue at all. Just stuck myself to it. Oh no, ominous green smoke. I best put on my safety gas mask. <laughs>